After a week of waiting since it was announced, it is finally here. The PixInsight Gradient Correction Tool. Now it was announced as simple, fast, stable, robust, reliable. That's a mouthful. And my question would be, really? Is it really that good? Or is it just a new alternative when Graxpert doesn't work? We will check this out today on my worst pictures that I have. Let's see what comes out right after the trailer. Hey, this is View Into Space. I'm Sascha from Switzerland. So good to meet you and thanks for watching my channel. So, PixInsight has released their tool a few hours ago. The update went absolutely smooth, no issues at all. There are some nice videos out there, which on one side show nicely the option, but on the other side make it very clear. At least the simple part is questionable. <laughs> but that's not the main point, right? We want to have a tool that works and that works good. The other thing which you have to keep in mind is that this is not Mars. I also misunderstood that. This is just a tool which will work on top of Mars, which actually means whatever we see today will work even better once Mars is released. And with that, let's go on my computer, let's go into PixInsight and check it out. Okay, welcome to PixInsight. Now what we have here is some of the worst pictures you have ever seen. They, they were made at the very beginning of my astrophotography career. And at opportunities like this, I always cherish them again. Because they're just the perfect way to prove if a tool is good or not. But we also obviously have a few decent ones also because we do not only want to look at the extreme situation. Now what we're going to do, we're going to deal with them on one side with the new gradient correction tool and on the other side with Cragspert. And then we'll see which tool does it better. And also we obviously going to test the slogan of the new tool, which is, let's remember it, simple, fast, stable, robust, reliable. Now let's face it, Stable, robust and reliable are almost the same thing. And it's also practically non measurable. So the only two things we can look at is, is it simple and is it fast? So let's first of all look at the new tool and let's look at the Gragspert script. So when I compare that and I have simple in mind, I think we can already assume that Gragspert won because it has just one lever here and here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight plus some buttons. So yeah, definitely Gragspert is more simple because you practically only have to push a button, that's it. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's better and it also doesn't necessarily mean it's faster. So we will look at that. So we start right away with our first picture which is this beauty here, M14. It has huge gradients in there, also these kind of donuts, so horrible. We will now clone that and let's start here with the gradient correction tool. I actually watched the Pink's Inside instruction videos before I did this video and this is what I can tell you. Scale and smoothness according to them, have always to practically be at the same level. So if you go down with the scale, you go down with the smoothness and the opposite around. And the smoothness is practically the same as you had in dB or so with the smoothness. So if you have more complex gradients, then you actually go down with the smoothness and also here with the scale, obviously. And the opposite around, if you have a very smooth gradient, which goes from one side to the other, then you would go up. In this case, given we have a whole mess, we probably go here a little bit down. Then we have this automatic convergence. And what it does, it actually uses iterations. 
So like before, you did three or four times TBE or ABE. Um, here it does kind of the same. And I would believe as soon as it gets a little bit complex, it's better this is selected than not. Structure protection means that when you have a very bright object in your picture, like a huge navel or so, that it actually protects that, that nothing is taken from this navel. In this case, we can deselect that because I'm not really scared that it takes anything away from my cluster. Now here with the threshold, the high threshold is in principle how much also bright objects should be included. So if you have bright gradients like here, you need to go up. Don't ask me yet how much. And if you have rather decent gradients, you, keep it, you can keep it rather low. So let's now try what happens. And I have to say, wow, this is amazing. If I look right here, even the donuts, they're gone. It's completely flattened out. So now we take the whole mess again and we run Gregspert over it. Now, first of all, it didn't do a good job at all. And second of all, it took way longer than the gradient correction tool. So this round goes by all means to the gradient correction tool. So let's go here to the second picture. At least here we have a decent gradient going from one side dark to the other side bright. So I think it should be easier than the last one. So I go here back again to default. I would say here it's so bright, let's keep the bright structure protection on, why not? Um, I would always leave this on, I don't know, I have a feeling this, I never saw an example in their videos that this does something bad, so I don't know why they don't just do it by default. Um, here we can actually go with the smoothness a little bit up because it's really a straight gradient. The high threshold probably we have to increase a little bit given that it's rather bright here. So let's throw this over. And again, it does a really great job. I would say there might be a little tiny bit of gradient still. I feel like it overcorrected a little bit. So let's go with the high threshold down again. And I think that even helped. And it's better now but really, really great. So let's see what Gregsbert can do. And here Gregsbert does a great job. Looking at them now side by side, I feel that here the stars are actually a little bit sharper than here out of whatever reason. From evenness, probably Gregsbert did it a little tiny bit better, I don't know, but I would say it's a tie. Now the next picture we want to play with is this here. Also absolute horrific gradient um, vignetting, just ugly. So here we definitely take the structure protection off, automatic convergence on again, smoothness and scale, it's, I would rather go down with this. There's a lot of different levels, it's not smooth. Threshold probably a little bit up, and then I think we should be good. Let's throw it on there and let's see the miracle it can do or not. This is mind blowing. This is really, really mind blowing. This is just flat. There's a tiny little bit up here again, but I mean, it's, it's minimal. So here we have the clone. We get Gregspert, throw it on there, and a no. No, absolutely, by no means. It improved it, definitely better than it was, but here, absolutely not. Here, absolutely not. It's a million times better what the gradient correction tool can do than what Gregsburg can do in this case. Another horrific example, this is not even gradient, I simply probably forgot their flat. I mean, Quite honestly, and we get again, we had this discussion already by Gregsbert, but now even more, do we even need flats? Quiv already told us we don't need darks. Now, do we still need flats? Let's see. So probably I will leave it like before. I'm a little bit clueless what to choose here. 
um, let's just see. Let's just throw it on there. And, well, do I still have to say anything? There is still, obviously, a very, very faint part. And I think if we will play around here, maybe this could also be made gone. But that's anyway, that was insane. It's just perfect. And Gregspert? Again, it's definitely better than it was, but there's still the full rainbow here. Even in here, it's not consistent. So again, the gradient correction tool, one by a million. And I think let's use this here as a last example, because here the gradient is not really consistent. We have it here as a vineyard thing, then we have here a very strong one, but it doesn't go nicely through. So again, it's rather bright. We put the threshold here up, move this down here. And again, you know, it's gone. The only thing here, probably now this would be something we would have to look at. You see, we have here some overcorrection. So that's probably has now to do here with the, with the high threshold. So let's try that. We do the structure protection. We put the high threshold a little bit down again and much better now. The whole overcorrection is gone, looking nice. So what should I say? Blown away, mission accomplished. Okay, let me reiterate that again. Wow. I think you know that sometimes I like to complain a little bit about the lack of innovation at PixInsight, but I think we also have to admit when they do something good and that is really, it's really amazing. It's really better than anything we had until now for gradient removal. And it is just one more element of new scripts and processes that came out in the last few months and which changed the whole game of processing. So I think bottom line is, as much as I was a fan of Gregsbert, and as happy as I was when recently the script came out to use Gregsbert directly out of PixInsight. But starting today, PixInsight users do not need Gregsbert anymore. The native tool, the gradient correction tool of PixInsight does the best job. And it is finally again a new selling argument for PixInsight, which makes it really unique and which gives you really an advantage when you own it. Happy to hear your experience, your issues, your excitement. Please leave it in the comment below. And if you want to know who was the first to actually hear about the release of this tool, my experiences with it, it was my Patreon community. And if you want to also belong to them and be the first to hear about these news, Link is in the description below. See you next time and clear skies.